So when you talk about uh, green software, it is all about how do you design and develop applications with uh, energy efficiency in mind so that you could reduce carbon impact. And uh, when we talk about green software, we have to look at the space holistically, uh, right from uh, the software development life cycle. For instance, how do you embed uh, energy efficiency and reduce carbon as part of your uh, software development life cycle process? Uh, be it uh, uh, the, using the right level of uh, programming language, right level of architecture. Just to give you an insight, uh, there was a recent bl blog I read where uh, an organization moved from uh, JavaScript to Rust. Rust is uh, probably the second and third best programming language. And they were able to optimize the application uh, by 60 to 70%, both in CPU and memory. And uh, the most interesting part of uh, this equation was it was only a small part that they migrated. So you didn't need to look at uh, in, uh, changing the entire code base, but only a small impact at scale can have a significant improvement both in terms of energy carbon as well as for, for the organization it also means a lot of cost savings. The other area that we look in when you talk about green software is the whole data initiative, right? Uh, organization have been keep piling the data over the years with the event that it might be used in future. And uh, personally also is true, right? We all take uh, selfies, photo, uh, because our phone has infinite storage. We never go back and delete it. Uh, and the, uh, all the information goes back back to uh, the cloud and so on. So from a data perspective, when you talk about green software, how do you bring in uh, the whole uh, green data aspects? For instance, how do you do uh, optimized storage, uh, backups, and so on? And then we have the AI angle to it, right? We, we talked about uh, the classical AI and generative AI, right? And there was an interesting question in terms of if you have infinite, uh, do you need to do infinite training uh, because GPUs might be limited? The solution to that is using green AI principles. Uh, and few examples have come out uh, in the last month, last couple of months itself, right? With uh, the DeepSeq model on how they can do intelligent training uh, use a different architecture as compared to transformer and also reduce the training time and make it cost efficient. A uh, couple of days back, Alibaba released their uh, model, right, which is even more optimized. It's a 32 uh, billion model, which does the same uh, capability uh, with reduced uh, uh, cost as well as carbon efficiency. And finally, you have the deployment angle, which uh, when you're deploying everything to cloud, the cloud runs on renewable energy. Uh, from a renewable aspect, uh, when which applications needs to run and what point of time. The concept that we call is carbon-aware computing. How do you leverage carbon-aware computing to reduce your carbon workloads? And finally, you have the infrastructure angle because whether it's servers, GPUs, ideally you want to minimize that uh, so that uh, you could increase the lifespan of the devices. Uh, and also you need to look look at in uh, total all, all of these aspects. So green software basically looks at all of these aspects uh, right from hardware, software, and how can you bring down the energy, um, uh, carbon emission, increase uh, the energy efficiency. And when we launched the Green Software Foundation three, four, I mean, four, almost four years back in 2021, uh, we had four broad challenges uh, when we started this. One is, there was no lack of there was lack of standards and what what it means to measure uh, carbon emission and that's why we started working on uh, a specification called software carbon intensity and uh, last year we achieved uh, the ISO specification also now so any organization can now measure uh, carbon emission in a standardized way the second challenge we looked into it was around um, uh, tools and technology right now we have the standards, what tools uh, we need to provide it to our developer community. And that's where we launch uh, tools like Carbon uh, SDK uh, and the Impact Framework, which can help you measure and uh, reduce your carbon emissions. And then we have the awareness and education angle, right? How do we educate our workforce where we launch uh, various uh, learning materials as well as there's a free course available through our Linux Foundation on green software. I encourage everyone you to take the course and be aware of the green software principles. And, f and fourth one was basically around whole policy, right? How do we engage with organizations uh, and universities and so on to make, make this uh, further. So that, that's, how, that's how I would uh, sum it up, right? In terms of uh, making 
green software right as as a priority uh, as a first class citizen right whenever you uh, design and develop applications great uh, thank you